Hi, friends. I'm so excited to welcome all of you to the second science night of the fall season um, offered by the National Mag Lab in partnership with the Leon County Public Library. My name is uh, Miss Stephanie. I'm a librarian at the main library downtown in Tallahassee. I have with me some scientists from the National Mag Lab in Tallahassee who will be teaching you about DNA and forensics tonight. Um, so if you're fans of true crime, this will be particularly interesting for you. Um, I know you're just as excited as I am. I am gonna hand it off to MagLab scientist, Julia, and she's gonna introduce our presenter for tonight. All right, thank you, Stephanie. Thank you so much for uh, hosting us at the library. Uh, we're excited to be with you all tonight. Um, as Stephanie said, we are from the Mag Lab. The Mag Lab is a research institute, research lab in Tallahassee, Florida. We're located on Innovation Park and we do research with magnets. We build magnets, we look into material for magnets and we do all kind of cool science with magnets. And we would like to share a little bit of our enthusiasm for science with you guys tonight. And I am very excited to have Mr. Carlos with me tonight. He's our awesome chat master and our um, main outreach person at the Mag Lab. So if you need any programs for school, uh, he's the person to contact. Um, also, we have with us our uh, special guest tonight, that's Dr. Faith Scott. And I'm very excited for her to share some of her enthusiasm for science with you guys. So um, without further ado, Faith, take it away. All right, thank you. Well, uh, yeah, thank you, Yulia. And um, yeah, as she said, uh, my name is Faith Scott. I'm a postdoc researcher at the Mag Lab. And uh, today I've come to tell you a little bit about DNA and forensics. Um, so before we get too far in, uh, let's start by making sure everybody can hear us. So we're gonna do a little poll. Um, let us know if you can hear us talking um, and if you can see uh, if you can see us, if you can see the screen. Um, and also just let us know um, who's watching and um, uh, where are you joining us from. Um, later on, we're going to have a DNA model activity. Um, so you're going to need some gummy bears, uh, some Twizzlers, uh, some toothpicks, and uh, pen and paper. And I'm going to ask you to hold off on eating those until after uh, the activity, please. Um, I know it's a little bit of a temptation. Um, so uh, to get us started out, um, let me know what you think uh, when you hear uh, the, the word DNA. Um, what do you associate that with? I'm going to jump in right now and just let you know that I've had a couple people type in and already say that DNA and forensics is their future profession. That's so, so exciting. So we may have some future um, forensics, maybe forensic psychologists, maybe forensic pathologists. I, and I'm saying words that I don't know what they mean. So, but we, but we got future scientists here. So that's awesome. It's very exciting. Yeah. I had a friend in college, um, doing forensic psychology uh, by combining a, a psych major and a criminal uh, a criminology major. So that's one way you might go about it. Um, <clears throat> so yeah, um, do we have any answers as to what DNA is or what we associate DNA with? Otherwise I can jump in. All right, if anybody wants to tell us what they think DNA is, type that into the chat box. I will be glad to jump in. And, and Faith, I usually have permission from everyone to just barge in and ask my questions when I get them. Absolutely. Um, so you have to uh, forgive me for doing that. But we got a couple of answers already. Um, a, a couple of other people already saying they're thinking about forensic science. Um, in definitions for DNA, one is the twisty things. Yes, Not wrong. Um, and DNA is the building map of your body. Also good, yes. And that's all I've got so far. Oh, oh, oh I, I just got another one. DNA is the genetic strand of the nucleus. Whoa, yes. So we're going to get farther into that. Um, so DNA, oh no, it's jumping forward again. You'll have to bear with me. Um, so 
DNA uh, stands for deoxyribonucleic acid, and that's long, so we're just going to say DNA a lot. Um, it's a long set of molecules uh, in cells that determines how proteins are made. Uh, you inherit your DNA from your biological parents, uh, and it de determines the outcome of many of your physical traits um, through genes. And um, uh, some of these traits will be your eye color or your hair color, um, but there's also some things like um, uh, your, if you have a sensitivity to bittered foods, um, that's called being a super taster. Um, and also some health conditions have been linked to DNA. And so uh, scientists are very interested in what your DNA looks like and how it is expressed. Um, so we're already going to do another poll. Uh, so we're going to ask you what, um, what kinds of traits you have. Uh, so uh, do you have a widow's peak, which is where your hair kind of comes to a point? Um, one of my favorite ones uh, that's genetic is, um, can you roll your tongue up like a taco and do that? Um, uh, can you, uh, when you smile, do you have a dimple anywhere when you smile? I don't seem to have one right now, um, but I did when I was a baby, um, and that was a genetic predisposition for me. Um, another one is whether you have a chin cleft or not. Um, do you have a line down the center of your chin, um, or do you have freckles? So those are all different uh, traits that we can uh, find out about. Um, and those are also linked to uh, your biological parents. So half of our participants have answered. So oh, almost everybody has answered. So let's, uh, let's have a look at your poll, Faith. Fantastic. Okay, yeah, oh. so. Faith, I have a question. Yes. Um, I, I don't know how to answer the first question because I used to have a widow's peak and over the years, I don't know where it went. <laughs> um, I, would, I would say these, there's different factors. And so I would say, yes, you are genetically predisposed to have a widow's peak. Excellent, thank you. <laughs> All right, so we have um, we have 14 people that do not have a widow's peak, but two do, and uh, dimples are almost 50-50. Can you roll your tongue? So uh, yeah, a lot of us can. Uh, freckles, uh, not a lot of freckles around tonight, and uh, only one cleft chin. Interesting. Yeah, so... Those are all uh, genetically predis predisposed, whether you're one way or the other. Um, and uh, um, they can be uh, more common in some, uh, in some countries than other based on uh, how genetics are uh, in certain populations. Um, but uh, let's, let's take a, le a look closer in at DNA. So DNA um, is made up of a sugar phosphate backbone uh, that wraps around the outside and kind of protects the inner portion. Uh, and the inner portion is made up of five uh, groups called bases. Um, and those are adenine, thymine, cytosine, and guanine. And those are also big chemical words. So a lot of times we just call them A, T, uh, C, and G. And um, they're very picky about how they bind. So adenine only binds to thymine. thymine. It does not bind to another A. It does not bind to a C or a G. Um, and cytosine then binds to guanine. Um, to make sure you're paying attention, we're going to do one more poll. So what does guanine then bind to? Survey is coming in. Okay. 
All right, we have to answer flying in. Yeah, yeah, so we're looking pretty good. So yeah, it looks like um, the most popular answer was cytosine, um, which is indeed what guanine is going to bind to. <clears throat> so the coolest thing about these base pairs um, is as you line up the base pairs along the spiral, the combination reads as a code and that code is read by your cells in order to create proteins to make up more cells. Uh, so even slight changes in this sequence can uh, result, result in a variant protein or trait. Um, sometimes changes will make it not work at all. The protein just won't come together and work. Um, so in your DNA, is the recipe book for that your body reads whenever um, you need to grow more cells when you're trying to get a bigger body um, or also to regenerate skin after you get a cut or scrape. <laughs> so one other thing I wanna tell you guys is um, just a little bit of a definition. So. Uh, one of the ways that we write DNA is in a line all like this. So this would be guanine, guanine, adenine, adenine, and so on. And then we'll write the complementary or the complement strand uh, right underneath it um, with um, the opposite base. So guanine binds to cytosine, adenine to thymine, etc. So um, you can open up the poll for which uh, would be the DNA complement to the code CCGGGTA. I really, um, I made that too complicated for myself. Um, <laughs> so yeah, can we open up the poll for, for that one? Uh, which one do you guys think um, that this one would be? And Carlos, if there's any other questions as we go, uh, you can let me know as well. Oh, I promise you, I will let you know. But so far, they've been quiet. So I'll remind okay. everyone, if you have any questions, something that you want to know and you really need the answer, type it in the chat box. I have permission to barge in and ask your questions because your questions are important. Yes. And I'm, yeah, unfortunately, I'm not going to. It goes so fast, I can't read it myself, but- nope. uh, I, That's what I'm here for. Don't even, don't even worry yes. about it, I got you. Thank you. All right, so looks like we have a lot of answers so far. Um, uh, we're at about 85%, okay. And um, yeah, so the answer, Oh, okay. So this might have been a little bit tricky. I think there was a typo when I was typing it in, unfortunately. Um, but I meant for it to be B. <laughs> um, I, I think I had a typo. Um, and I think most most assumed that that was the case since that yes, was the answer yes. that um, came out. <clears throat> it's kind of funny because um, uh, typos do also happen in your DNA. Um, and your body has ways to um, correct those when it finds them. Um, uh, a, a typo. Huh? I, I have two questions, one from the audience, one from me. Okay, great. So first from the audience, they want to know, do plants have DNA also? Yes, they do. All living things have DNA. That's important. Excellent. And the second question, um, since you mentioned that typos in DNA, um, I'm, I'm going to make a, a, a leap of faith here. I believe that those are called mutations. That is correct. See, I know some biology. Yeah, it's very comic book biology and I love it. <laughs> yeah, so um, yeah, I guess if, uh, if this was uh, in our cells, then it would have recognized that there was an extra C 
on the end there and clipped that off before it did any damage uh, to our proteins. Um, but uh, otherwise, uh, we would end up with a G, G, C to G, A, T. So that would be the correct um, answer. So good, if good I job. got a follow-up question. Yes. And I, I don't know enough biology to answer this, but they asked, and I heard you say all living things have DNA. Yes. Um, and then they asked, do germs have DNA? Oh, absolutely. Um, so back, okay, when you say germs, there's a few different things that can be called germs. Um, bacteria is one thing. Um, and most bacteria are actually what we call a single celled organism. Uh, so everything they need to live is just in that one cell. And that cell has DNA in it. And that's how it propagates. Um, viruses are a little bit of a different story. Um, they have something I'll get into a little bit later, which is called RNA, but not all of them have DNA, but they're a very special case. Um, most things that we would call living do have DNA. Um, so it's kind of the, the recipe book for whatever, uh, whatever kind of life you're, you're having, happening to uh, propagate. <clears throat> Okay, so good job on that poll, you guys. Um, so I'm just going into another poll. Um, so where in the cell would you find DNA? Does anyone know this? <clears throat> so when you look, this is a human cell or a animal cell. Um, Plant cells look a little bit different. They have a, um, a thicker wall around the outside and um, that, that gives them some extra structure. We are, we are more squishy on, on the outside than, um, than most plants are. Um, <clears throat> so for this poll, um, where do we think, uh, where do we think um, the DNA is found? Oh, we are flashing in with fantastic answers. You saw that too. Yes, it was open and it was like that. Everyone uh, was very excited I, to answer. I had a few answers typed into the chat box before the poll was open too. Yeah. So well done, everyone. Well, well done. Yes. So uh, the DNA is in the nucleus. Um, and then there's a related molecule called RNA. Um, which exists in different places. It, the RNA can go out into the cytosol and um, in the Golgi complex in different places. Okay, can I be nerdy for a second? Yes. Um, what I, I was looking at that picture of the cell and I recognized the mitochondria, even though that wasn't one of our options. Okay. And I was like, oh, I love the mitochondria. And of course, every student knows that the mitochondria is the powerhouse of the cell because every textbook has that. Uh, but, but did you know that in October, the mitochondria becomes the phytochondria and becomes the haunted house of the cell? <laughs> I'm sorry, I apologize. That's a, that's in, that's a good joke. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> okay, back to work now. All right. Okay, great. Yeah, so you're gonna find, um, uh, your, uh, your DNA in the nucleus. And that's actually kind of impressive because if you took all your DNA in just one of your cells and stretched it all out, it would be six feet long. So six feet of code material is packed into every one of your cells. So not only is this ladder structure um, squiggled up, um, into a double helix shape, but then it's wrapped around these protein structures called nucleosomes. And then those nucleosomes pack very closely together into what's called a chromatin fiber. And then that packs into the nucleus. So there's a lot of infrastructure that goes into, there's a lot of 
packing that goes into um, getting all your DNA to, to fit properly inside all your cells. Um, <clears throat> so uh, when we need a little bit of DNA in order to get the recipe for a certain protein off of it, uh, that DNA never leaves the nucleus, but it's, you can think of the DNA as like a big heavy recipe book that can never leave um, and then can never go into the kitchen. So you need to print off an individual recipe and bring it with you. And that's what RNA is. So RNA is a related type of molecule um, that reads off of the DNA. It matches up in, in base pairs in the same way. Uh, the only difference in RNA is it has a base called uracil instead of thymine. So it still binds to A to adenine, but it's uracil instead of thymine. And then there's also this protein called RNA polymerase, uh, which unzips the DNA and allows the RNA to form a chain um, uh, matching up with the DNA. And then that goes and reads off somewhere else to be made into a protein. Do you have a question, Carlos? I do have a question. Somebody asked if the Golgi complex, if that is used to ship things out of the cell, the Golgi complex. This guy? Sure. I can't remember. I think I think that's Golgi complex. It's been a while since I looked at Golgi complex. I kind of put that as a, uh, a red herring answer. Um, <clears throat> so this is a good this is a good opportunity for me to tell everyone. And actually, we we're having this discussion uh, a couple of weeks ago during the MagLab site visit that one of the um, most important things a scientist can do is admit when they don't know. And quite frankly, scientists don't know everything. That's why we're scientists, because we're trying to figure out more stuff. So yeah, no need to apologize because the best scientists are the ones that can say, you know, I don't know. Yeah, so um, I knew that the Golgi complex was something inside a cell um, and uh, past that, it's been a very long time since I looked at it in school, so I can't tell you for sure. Um, but thank you for your question. Um, so now I'm going to show you a video that illustrates this process of RNA uh, being read into DNA. Hopefully it works for us. So um, this is a model showing a DNA strand and uh, a starting protein. And the starter protein um, just kind of marks where the recipe is going to start. And then other, uh, other proteins are going to come around and form the uh, RNA polymerase complex uh, around the DNA. Uh, so there they go. Um, and that will start to unzip things. And then there's a starter and a starting enzyme that'll come in from the top and hit it, and then it's going to go. So watch closely, there it goes. So now the RNA polymerase is just zooming along here. Um, this is how fast it goes in your cells. This is happening in a lot of your cells right now. RNA is being read off from DNA in order to create more proteins. So you can see um, yellow uh, RNA sub parts going into here, and then they're coming out as a large RNA chain. And when this RNA polymerase uh, reads a part of the DNA that tells it to stop, then the RNA is going to release and go off to other parts of the cell in order to create the actual protein. So that'll be happening pretty soon now. Um, but it's just amazing to me how fast this process is going. Um, they made this to, to be how fast this is going in real time.
uh, in, in your cells. And there it goes. Um, that's just very cool to me. I, I Before I started um, presenting on DNA, I had no idea how fast that is. It's very cool to me. Um, <clears throat> OK, now it's going to try and play again. And we're going to do a DNA activity. Um, so everybody, get your gummy bears, get your Twizzlers, get toothpicks, and get a pen and paper. And we're going to make some DNA models. And I'll be excited to see some of your DNA models uh, later on. Um, if your parents will send them to uh, science night at magnet.fsu.edu. Um, please only send us your pictures if you agree with us uh, sharing your pictures um, so that we can show people how much fun you're having. Um, so I am going to tilt my, okay, so first I'm going to walk you through the first steps and then I'm going to tilt my camera down. Um, so uh, make your piece of paper have a cross on it and then um, put the letters that correspond to the four bases, which is adenine, thymine, cytosine, and guanine. And remember that adenine goes with thymine and cytosine goes with guanine. And then we're gonna start uh, sorting gummy bears. So I'm gonna tilt my camera down and we're just gonna chat for a while. As everybody's sorting gummy bears. And As everyone to, sorts gummy bears. Not to eat too many of them too. Um, yes. I'll let you know that I put the link to that video in the chat so you all can go watch it later on. Oh, uh, fantastic. I had a couple of people say that they had some streaming issues. So oh, the link's yeah, there I'm and you sorry. all can check it out. Oh, no, no, not your fault at all. Um, uh, yeah. I had some people tell me how cool the video was and had some people tell me that they had streaming issues. So I just thought I'd find it post it and that way everybody can watch it because the speed is impressive. Yes. So I decided that I want my red gummy bears to be adenine. Yellow are going to be thymine. Uh, my white gummies are going to be cytosine and green obviously has to be guanine because it starts with G. Um, so I'm going to get about five of each um, if I can. And Carlos, if there's any more questions, this is a fantastic time for it because I'm literally just sorting gummies. Absolutely. Everyone, if you have a question, type it in right now. But I was going to say that the guanine for green is just the best logic I've heard all day. It, it seems right. I can't complain. I, I was wondering where you're going with that. I was like, oh, yeah, G for green. <laughs> Absolutely. But keep in mind, if you have like different colored gummies, um, feel free to go your own way. Just make sure that you have them sorted out by color so that, um, so that you kind of know. Um, I found with a lot of gummies, it's kind of hard to tell between the orange and the yellow and the white, but I'm just going to do my best here. And if anybody got a bag with five different colored gummies, you got snacks. Yeah, there you go. I see Yulia nodding, so she approves. <laughs> Great. No questions from anyone. Questions. This, this is your chance to, to ask uh, uh, any question. You've got two amazing um, MagLab scientists and Yulia and Faith here. So anything you want to ask, even just like, what did you do at work today? Yeah, or like, you know, those, you know, future forensic scientists, uh, do you have any questions about, like, being a scientist? Uh, I, I do want to say right now um, that when I started working at the lab and I got introduced to the, um, oh, God, it's in geochem, it's a plasma mass spectrometer, um, I finally understood why every CSI episode has the mass spec in it. They always go to the mass spec for some analysis in every episode of uh, NCIS, which is my favorite one. And then they showed me the plasma mass spectrometer and I was like, oh, I see what it does. So that was very cool. Okay, we have a question, Faith. Okay. 
Very important. What's your favorite color? It is red. Good choice. Yulia, what's your favorite color? Green. Fantastic. Ooh, for guanine. <laughs> there you go. Stephanie, what about you? What's your favorite color? Purple. Ooh, good favorite. choice. Like dark purple in particular. And since we're going all the way around the room, I'm wearing my favorite color. Orange is always so bright and happy to me. So that's my favorite color. Fantastic. Yeah, so once you have your gummy bears sorted, you can move on to um, uh, getting uh, toothpicks through them. So you're gonna pierce the, the gummy bear so that its body is along the, um, along the toothpick and then do the same for the, uh, for the base pair that should go through it. Um, so you can um, make as many base pairs as you want. I'm probably not going to do all 10 of these on camera because that's a lot. But as you're doing those, uh, we got a science question. And the question was, when a gene strip combines, what happens? When genes are combined? When a, yeah, it says when a gene strip combines. Do we need more clarification on the question? Uh, do you mean like in the video where, uh, where like the, the DNA was splitting apart and then coming back together. Maybe, let's, let's go with that. So when the, when the two parts of the DNA come back together, um, there's a, a force in between molecules that's called hydrogen bonding and it actually attracts the two pieces together. Um, and that's kind of what holds the, um, that's what holds things together. So this in here would be a, a hydrogen pond. Nice. Um, and for our scientists, Yulia and Faith, this is for you too. Um, have you been to a different country to do science? Ooh. Yes, maybe I'll start with this one while Faith is, uh, is building her uh, base pairs. Yes, um, actually, I am in a different country right now to do science because um, I am originally from Germany and I have done science in the US. I've done science in the Netherlands, in Germany, in Switzerland, in France, in Spain, so uh, in Canada. So really all over the place. Science is a, is a really wonderful activity to bring um, all kinds of people from all over the world together. Um, to solve all kinds of cool questions. So yes, we, we are doing science in different places. And it's uh, one of my very, um, very dear things about science. I really enjoy that, that it brings together all kinds of different people from all kinds of different backgrounds. And uh, we all just burn for the science and are enthusiastic and in love with what we do. And um, yeah, that makes us all one big happy science family. Fantastic. Before Faith jumped in, I just want you to know, Yulia, that you've got some um, German fans in the uh, crowd today. <laughs> That's amazing. Bringing, bringing people together. Uh, what about here. you, Faith? Um, so I have not, it depends on how you uh, define doing science. Um, I went to a conference in France, which is talking to other scientists. That totally um, counts. Yeah, so that's getting ideas from other scientists and sharing our work. So I've done that, um, but uh, I haven't worked at a lab in another country yet, um, though that is definitely something I'd like to do in the future. I like that you put yet on that because you're <laughs> going to, not that I want to kick you out of the country, but you're going to go. Oh, yeah, yeah. All right. Are there any other questions? I, I haven't been to another country since I've been at the MAG lab, unfortunately. All of my, my conferences are domestic, so. Um, but, but like Yulia, I'm not from the United States. I was born in Nicaragua, um, and I've been in Miami. Um, I spent most of my growing up in Miami and then Tallahassee ever since, so. 
Um, Faith, what does your job involve? Oh, that's a good question. So most of my day-to-day -day does actually not involve DNA, um, but I work, so at the Mag Lab, we use magnet systems and I use magnet systems to look at what molecules look like um, through a process called nuclear magnetic resonance. And um, my main job is building probes for that. So um, yeah, I, uh, I, I get to build stuff every day um, and I really, I really like being able to do that. How about you, Leo? You want to answer as well? Oh, in my day-to-day -day, uh, work, I build and design and repair um, instruments that um, magnets need to run and that other scientists use for their experiments. So um, lots of big equipment, high power, um, wa cooling water, um, those kind of things. So big machines make my heart beat. <laughs> Yulia, did you want to be a scientist when you were little? Uh, no, I did not. I mean, I was always curious and trying to figure out how things work, but it didn't occur to me that I wanted to be a scientist until I was about one third through college. Yeah, because when I started to study, I was actually setting out to be a science journalist. So um, communicate science, um, but it was really heavy on the science part. So then I did, um, I did an internship similar to the, the RU that the lab um, is offering and I was hooked. I worked in, in a lab for a summer and I, I knew I didn't wanna do anything else ever again. So um, yeah, it was really the hands-on working in a lab and yeah, that, that got me going on this. So. What about you, Faith? Okay, so don't laugh. Oh um, no, we will laugh, but, but, that, but, but we still want to hear it. Um, have you ever been to like one of those historical reenactment places and there's a blacksmith? Yeah. I totally wanted to be a blacksmith when I grew up. Yay. So <laughs> um, this was the closest I could get. Uh, was working with metal and um, uh, getting to do that kind of stuff. But instead of making historical stuff, um, I make instruments that scientists use to solve big problems. Now, right before Faith does her magic with that DNA coil, I see she's about to jump into that. Um, yes. I want, I want to answer that question too. And I want to remind everyone that you are scientists when you're little because you are discovering the world around you. You are asking questions. You are wondering about what's going on. You are born scientists more than some scientists that are professionals. So you are scientists already. Keep doing what you're doing. So Absolutely. with that, I'll turn it over to you, Faith. Okay, great. So I'm ready to do the next step here. So uh, once you have a few uh, base pairs together, uh, you can line them up along with your um, with your pieces of uh, Twizzlers. I saw it looks delicious, and yes, it, it does. Um, and they don't all have to be facing the same color direction because in real life, they're going to be, um, you know, in different places in order to create the code uh, that will become a protein. So um line them up however you want and then have a little bit of spacing in between them and then um pierce through the um through the twizzler on each side uh so you make kind of a ladder and i'm going to ask you a question as we finish this up um for the next section so my question to you for the chat is um, what kind of places could a detective find DNA? That's my question. An excellent question. All right, everyone, where could a detective 
find DNA, type that into the box. I can't wait to hear these answers. Oh, look at that. They're flying in. All right. Oh, if wait, a very important question. If you don't have Twizzlers, what can they use? Oh, if you don't have Twizzlers, what could a toothpick stick into that kind Play of dough? rope structure? Clay. Yeah. Clay would work. Yeah. You can't eat the clay, unfortunately. No, no, no. Don't eat the clay. Um, but yeah, or maybe if you have yarn, you could get like oh. into a thick piece of yarn um, and kind of have things. Uh, it needs to be a little bit flexible. So this type of on the fly problem solving is what we do all the time at the Mag Lab, just so everybody <laughs> knows. Uh, it doesn't always have to do with Twizzlers. In fact, it usually doesn't have to do with Twizzlers, but problems come up and we have to figure out how to solve them and how to keep doing our work. Um, someone rec recommended or suggested licorice. So if you've got some licorice. Mm -hmm. um, okay, where can we find DNA? Are we ready for this? Absolutely. All right, we've got fingerprints, um, your spit, your blood, your hair, um, somebody's cheeks. Um, inside bodies, you can find DNA anywhere. Um, blood, saliva, sweat. Um, okay, I think that's all of them. Those are fantastic. Yeah. Oh, anywhere... oh, 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 I'm sorry. I got a really good answer that I missed. Yes. Under fingernails. Ooh, ooh, that's a good one. Yes. Um, yeah. Anywhere you find skins, uh, anywhere you find cells, you're going to find DNA. So that is fantastic answers. Um, let's finish up this DNA model and then we can um, get to the next forensic section. So uh, you now have hopefully a, um, a DNA ladder and now with the magic of twisting, you can make it into a DNA shape. So as you, as you twist it, the coolest thing to me about this is that as you twist it, you can see it compressing and you can kind of see how this becomes a, a, an efficient shape to keep the DNA code in, um, which is very, very cool to me. Um, so remember, if you have a DNA model, um, you can take a picture and your parents can send it to mm -hmm. us. Uh, and I'm going to put up the, um, I'm going to put the uh, slide back up so that we can get back into things. And that also has the email on it. It's science night at magnet.fsu.edu. Okay. So I'm going to, okay. All right, we're back. Okay, so now we're going to talk about forensics. Uh, so forensic scientists use all kinds of evidence to solve crimes. Uh, you mentioned fingerprints, also shoe print. Um, they'll look for poisons or other chemicals in the environment. Um, and then yes, they look for DNA. Uh, uh, some of the uh, forms that you uh, talked about are fantastic, especially saliva, blood. All those are things that you would look for in the environment. And um, much like a fingerprint or a footprint, um, you can uh, fingerprint DNA and match it to a source. So you can take a DNA from the scene and take uh, uh, something from one of your sub suspects or uh, some other subject. And you often swap the inside of the cheek. I was very excited to hear that in the chat. Um, you can swap the inside of the cheek and um, take DNA from that. And each of those is just a very small amount of DNA. Uh, so there's a process called PCR or polymer polymerase chain reaction uh, that you can do 
to multiply the amount of DNA that you have and all the DNA strands will look the same. Um, so you have one bulk DNA sample from your scene and now you have a bulk DNA sample from the subject and you can compare those side by side. And um, it's important to know that your DNA is unique to you. Um, even it, it's not the same as those from your siblings, um, your, uh, the way uh, you're gonna get DNA from your mom and your dad is gonna be mixed together in a different way than any of your siblings. There is one case where that's not true exactly, and that is um, identical twins. Um, and that is probably why there is so, uh, I see so many ident ident identical twins on cop shows and uh, detective dramas because you can frame your identical twin with DNA. Um, but don't do that. Don't, don't do crimes. Faith, Faith, we have a very, very important question. Um, they want to know if they can eat their DNA now. Um, be careful if your, uh, if your uh, toothpicks started to splinter, um, but especially if you have extra gummies, um, I think that's probably OK. Um, so uh oh oh and i made a comment i may confuse everybody um with all the things that we said we talked about saliva and blood and sweat and and all that um and i pointed out that i don't think anybody said hair oh but hair does have dna right yes okay but um so oh. most of your hair is a just keratin it's just a it's like a biological byproduct. It's not actually cells, um, but at the base of your hair, at your scalp, um, there's hair follicles and those are live cells. And okay. so if you pluck a hair from your head, then at the end, <laughs> there will be a DNA. Um, I, so, I did not know that. Thank you for that clarification. Yeah, it's a little bit... Um, maybe a little bit in the weeds. But. Yeah, they may leave that out of the cop shows. Um, so, <laughs> and, and to clarify something else, that means that all DNA for identical twins are the same? Yes. Um, yeah, because they start um, as a single cell and, uh, and go from there. Copy. Yes. Okay, so everybody that asked that question, do not frame your identical twin. Don't. That yeah, we're not saying I'm not telling you all. to do that. Please no. don't. Please don't. <laughs> um, but uh, because your fingerprint, your DNA fingerprint is unique to you, um, then it can be used um, uh, to, to solve crimes. Uh, something else to note is uh, DNA sometimes is damaged and you only get like a fragment. Um, so uh, Scientists have special programs that can um, take a DNA fragment and line it up with a full set of DNA and see where it is most likely to show up in that sequence. Um, so that's something that I kind of want to do by eye a little bit. Um, so I want to show you some ways that you can compare DNA yourself. Um, so you can look for patterns. Um, so for this, it's GGAA, GGAA. So you can look in the main sequence and find it in this section here. You can also look for long repeats. Uh, are there any long repeats of, uh, of cytosines? And yes, we find some over on this end. Um, and if that fails, um, then one way that you can kind of do things is take a piece of paper, write the code at the top of the piece of paper and slide it along to see if it matches up at any point. So if you were to do that with this sequence and this little fragment, you would find that this A starts here, followed by C, C, G, G, and so on. 
Um, and so you can see that this entire fragment does actually match up with this as well. So now I have a forensic science question for you all uh, with a little bit of a setup. So Anastasia Romanov was the daughter of a Russian czar uh, who went missing in 1918 when her family fell out of power. And many newspapers at the time wrote articles suggesting uh, where the princess might have gone when she disappeared. And then years later, uh, several women came forward and claimed that they were this lost Russian princess, Anastasia, um, because that came with a lot of prestige. And now with DNA sequencing, we can find out who was the real Anastasia. So I have the DNA fragment from the Russian palace here. Uh, and this is a long DNA strand. And then I have smaller fragments from all of the DNA, from all of the subjects. So this is from subject A, this one is from subject B, subject C, and subject D. And I'm going to ask you to answer who is the real Anastasia? So we can start that poll now. All right, so as everybody tries to figure out which is the correct answer in this DNA puzzle, a uh, question was asked to me, Faith, and the question is, uh, what happens if the C um, does not match up with the G? Is that something that could happen or do they always match up? They usually, um, if it is another, if it's a C and a G, on the other side from each other, they usually do um, connect back up over time, um, even if they separate. Um, other molecules in the cell are going to push them in different ways and they'll find their way back together. Um, so I think that's. Thank you. Any Hi, other Brooke. questions? Yeah, we need to have just a few more questions. Um, uh, they, they still want to know, I think they're shocked by the idea that twins have identical DNA, but yes, twins do have identical DNA. Identical twins, yes. Fraternal identical twins, twins. Fraternal twins have, um, have different DNA. Thank you for clarifying. You're right. Identical twins have identical DNA, and that has to be true because my wife just walked by and, and said, mm-hmm, so she's always right. <laughs> she's always right. There you go. Yeah, and um, yeah, so if I, that's also why identical twins often look so similar, um, is because they have identical DNA, which will lead to identical physical traits. All right, we have some answers for the poll. Fantastic. Okay, so it looks like. Uh, we had most people go with subject C, which indeed is Anastasia. Um, so right. good job, everybody, on finding this. Um, I kind of gave you some tricky ones. So um, we could uh, remove subject A because you see this cytosine is not in the main um, fragment anywhere. Um, subject B is a little bit tricky, but if you go code by code, uh, uh, if you go um, base by base, uh, then it doesn't quite match up. Um, and then subject D, uh, you can rule out because um, these repeating T's uh, do not um, exist in this in this fragment, um, but it is subject C that is Anastasia. So good job on that, you guys. Um, and yeah, thank you so much with, for learning with me today. Are there any other questions before I go? No questions right now, but if they come up, I will surely ask. All right, fantastic. I am going to uh, pass it on to Stephanie then. Hello, everyone. Uh, thank you so much. Um, 
Faith and Yulia and Carlos um, for putting on this program. It was really educational. Um, and I am sorry, Faith, I think it was my typo with that poll. And it's because I didn't brush up on my DNA knowledge before, or I would have caught it. <sighs> Um, but right. thank you everyone. And if you're interested in, um, and thank you Faith for having it on a the slide there, but if you're interested in learning more about forensics, um, we did put together a list of books that the library has. If you wanna check out the list and put something on hold, you can click on the picture of the book um, from this list here and put it on hold straight from our catalog. I also, um, wanted to before i hand it back to you leah i'm going to take over the share screen from you faith okay um real quick to talk about some programs we have coming up within the library um can everyone see this yep. yes so the first one we have our crazy eights math club going on right now um which math is like a close cousin to science so if you um want to come to a math program it goes on it's every Saturday at our East Side Branch Library um, and even if you've missed some other meetings they change the topic each time so you can just drop on in our next one is going to be daring darts so it's going to be a giant game of floor darts um, sounds like a lot of fun that's at our East Side Branch um, on the 23rd so that's this Saturday at 2 30 p.m and then they also have some going until November 13th every Saturday our another program that I think fits really well with our topic tonight is in a few days on October 26th at 7 p.m. on Zoom, we are going to have a program called the Cultural Phenomenon of Home DNA Testing. So we have an author who wrote a book called The Lost Family, How DNA Testing is Upending Who We Are, and she's going to give a talk about how home DNA testing has kind of... Um, really had an impact on our culture. Um, so if you're interested in that, that's going to be October 26th, which is next Tuesday at 7 p.m. Um, thank you so much. And I'll hand it over to Yulia now. All right. Well, thanks a lot, Stephanie. We'll certainly check out those books. Um, also, thank you so much, Faith, for joining us tonight and doing those activities with us. I know everybody had a blast. Um, I'd like to also remind everyone that we meet again next month, again on Zoom. Um, you can check out our website. I posted it in the chat a couple of times, um, November 18th, and we're going to talk about molecular gastronomy. So we're going to... Uh, to do that and I'm very excited for that. So we we'll hope to see you all then. Um, thanks a lot. And with this, I pass to Carlos for his closing remarks. You guys have to come next month for molecular gastronomy. Faith is amazing, Martha is equally amazing. So Yulia, you, you've lined up some really great scientists. This is gonna be great, uh, but that's not why you turned it over to me. You turned it over to me so that I can remind everyone that the National Magnet Lab is taxpayer funded by the National Science Foundation and the state of Florida, which makes all of you stakeholders in our science. So I stop here to say thank you all for supporting the Mag Lab, for supporting our science. And before I say goodbye, I always have to tell everyone just a quick reminder to stay nerdy, stay geeky, and stay true to who you are. With that being said, I'm going to say goodbye to everyone. We'll see you next month. And I've got my calaveras here for Dia de los Muertos, which is coming up too. So goodbye, everyone. We'll see you soon. Bye. Thank Bye. you. Thank you. Bye-bye.